first polls are closing in minutes in Michigan, and Donald Trump is, of course, set to win the GOP primary bigly. And although President Biden will also win his primary, he's facing strong headwinds from every direction and seems to have a real commitment issue. I did vote uncommitted today. I'm planning on voting uncommitted. We should send a message to our Democrats that we're just not happy with um, what's going on, not just with, like, here, but abroad as well. Joining me now, Chris Bedford, senior contributor at The Federalist, and Victor Davis Hanson, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. Victor, uh, we're seeing a lot of division um, on the left. Obviously, there's division on the right as well. But just how big of a problem is this going to be for the Biden campaign as reality begins to set in as they get closer to the general? Yeah, I think we're getting to a point of no return, Laura, with the corruption issue, the cognitive issue, and the unpopularity and disaster of his uh, agenda, and now this defection within the Democratic Party. It's more of a question of not if they're going to try to remove him, but when and how. And I don't think they have the answers to either one. It's really the most remarkable meltdown of a presidency we've seen in our modern era. And it's juxtaposed with probably the greatest political recovery of Donald Trump since Richard Nixon in 1962. And Donald Trump, the more they try to demonize and incarcerate him or uh, use lawfare against him, the more popular he becomes. So it's just, it's bizarre how things have just flipped since uh, 2021. It's remarkable. And I, I think they're in a dilemma and they don't, they, ha they know what they have to do, but they don't know how to do it and when to do it. Well, MSNBC is worried because Biden's problem of the uncommitted voters um, may uh, portend a much larger problem in the general watch. This is a problem all across the country, and I hope that the president and Blinken can get this thing calmed down, because if it don't get calmed down before the Democratic convention, it, it, it's going to be a very ugly time in Chicago, I promise you that. They're going to have to tell B.B. Netanyahu, hey, dude, you're not, we're not going to lose our election because you're scared to go to jail. Chris, Biden was hinting at a ceasefire coming. Will that stem the... Stem the uh the exit exit polls for that we're seeing tonight. I think it's probably going to take more than that. I mean, some of those actions like that might bring back some of the white liberal voters we've seen getting interviewed, some of the younger woke folks who just, for whatever reason, their education decided to side with Hamas on this. At the end of the day, when they're faced with a Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, they might come around. But in a state like Michigan, where, Joe, where Donald Trump had made historic inroads with a lot of working class white voters, the Democratic Party's left behind and left on the table, they need a lot of those Muslim voters who, who aren't as fickle as some of the young college students, et cetera, who may, back a, back a, may end up backing Biden in the end. Those voters you've seen interview after interview with, I think he might be losing that coalition. They've got a different foreign policy idea than what the White House currently has. And it's going to take a lot more than just a call for a ceasefire to bring them back. Uh, Victor, a new Emerson College poll has Trump trouncing Biden in key swing states. Check this out. He's up 10 points in Nevada, nine in North Carolina and Georgia, five in Pennsylvania. He's winning Wisconsin and Michigan as well. Now, Victor, those are strong numbers, no doubt. But I've talked to... Uh, you know, top Republicans who are remaining very worried about mail-in ballots and believe that Republicans may still, after all these years, still not have a strategy to get their own mail-in ballot initiative going in states where they don't control the legislature. I'm very worried, too. I think if you look at every demo demographic, Trump is doing much better than he did in 2016 and 2020, especially He's up to maybe 18 percent of blacks and 42 or 3 percent of Latinos. But if you have these swing states that have gone from 35 percent mail-in balloting to 70 percent, and the rejection rate of invalid ballots has fallen from 4 to 5 percent traditionally down to 0.2 or 0.3 when they're flooded with them, then you've got a real problem that I think that they're going to have to win by four or five points in these swing states to cancel out the, this advantage they have in mail-in balloting. And that's, you know, I don't want to be too conspiratorial, Laura, but when you see 7 million people flood the border and yeah. they're open, it's not a it's, it's not laxity. It was a choice. It's deliberate. I think it's coinciding with the availability of mail-in ballots. 
Well, uh, they knew that this was coming. So if they don't have the lawyers in place, if they don't have the strategy in place, Republicans have no one to blame but themselves. Chris and Victor, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.